Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. On today's episode of Jeepers with a Cool Guy, we're going to rebuild that. What is that? That's your vapor canister, charcoal canister. I think it's your vapor canister. Anyways, uh, it's got four ports on it, at least for the CJ7s. Um, the six cylinders, and I think the eight cylinders has uh, has the same thing. But anyways, we're going to tear this thing apart and put it back together. The purpose of the vapor canister is to help filter out all of the excess gasoline and fuel vapors from various compartments within the uh, the engine, um, and help circulate them both back into the carburetor and uh, to be burned up, and also to send them back into the, the gas tank, kind of help keep the pressure um, equalized and also to make sure that the vapors are not just circulating into all places of the Jeep, especially in the interior when you're sitting in the, uh, the CJ7's cabin. Um, kind of gets a little smelly. So if you are having that, um, that experience, You've either done a couple, you've done one thing, you've taken this out because you didn't think you needed it, but you actually do need it. Um, or two, it's clogged up, there's something broken with it, or it's oversaturated. So I can actually smell the fuel vapors in here. Um, this one is seriously dilapidated. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut this thing open. We're going to replace all of the charcoal that's in here. We're going to replace the, uh, the foam filters that are on the inside. And then we're going to plastic weld it back together, and this thing's going to be basically brand new. So, let's get to it. So just for my own uh, purposes, I'm going to clean this thing up real quick. I'm going to just get rid of all the dirt and the mud, because this thing has not been well taken care of, and I just want to operate with a better looking piece of machinery. Well, that's better. Um, this thing is so caked with dirt and mud and there was rocks and it, I mean, it, it's the underside of the thing is just gross. But really this is not a glamour piece. This is a functional piece and this is actually a very integral part of your fuel circulation and fume control um, system in your vehicle. So don't take these things out. Don't get rid of them. Um, on a side note, DeLorean, strangely enough, um, makes these. Uh, not exactly like this, but they have one that you can buy that will fit um, all of the ports uh, for your CJ7. So, if you want to go out and just buy a new one, but it doesn't look original because this one's got the numbers on it and the date and everything like that, um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it also has AMC on the top of it, the logo inside of the uh, pressure cap, which is kind of cool. Either way, um, if you want to restore yours, it's going to cost you probably 20 bucks. It would be about $15, give or take, for the charcoal, um, which I'll show you later on in the video. And then uh, you need to get a this white mesh filter that goes underneath here. You can get it through Rock Auto or I think uh, um, Quadratech carries it too. But what I'll do is I'll put the link to that part in the description. So, first things first. Wherever the band that holds this in place goes across, uh, across the, uh, the main chamber of this thing is where we're going to cut it. So we are going to get, we're going to mark this off with some tape and we're going to cut it with a handsaw, just like this. Um, and we're going to do the magic show where we're going to cut it in half. So let's go ahead and get this marked off um, and slice and dice. This does not have to be perfect. It's really not that important. Um, actually, if it's not perfect, it might be a little bit better to be able to put it back into place because the cut isn't um, nice and centralized. All right, so now just grab yourself a saw with a fairly small tooth to it. You don't want anything really big because then you're gonna wind up tearing up more than you need to. And then just cut along the line and cut the thing in half. You can do this with a Dremel or a rotary blade, but those things get really hot and they wind up melting the plastic and they blow the plastic all over the place. So this may take a little bit longer, may be a little bit more arduous to do, but this is definitely the better way to do it. Alright, 
I'm just over halfway, about two thirds of the way through. You can already see the charcoal starting to fall out. So when you do this, I would suggest having this on a fairly broad area because this whole thing's full of charcoal, um, gasoline fume infused charcoal. So one, keep away from uh, cigarettes and open flames. Uh, and two, uh, make sure that you just have an area where all the charcoal can come out and the garbage can really close. Man, you can really smell that gas stuff. Yeah. All right, there we go. Wow. The whole bottom part of this thing is just mud caked carbon. Yeah, uh, that's probably not doing a whole lot for the filtering. Look at that. Okay, yeah, this thing has long ago used up its uh, viability. Okay, two things. Why do we cut it in half? Um, why not just punch a hole in it, drain the carbon out, and put some new carbon in? Um, or uh, charcoal. Well, because we need to take a look at uh, the shape of these foam rings that are actually inside of here. And as you can tell, this one should not have mud in there. So this is need, going to need to be, to be replaced. We need to wash this whole thing out. So there's three total filters. There's the one in the bottom to hold the charcoal in. There's the one at the top to hold the charcoal from going up into the ports and then there's this one central one so from here you want to take out all these little pieces of uh, filter kind of see what shape they're in um, get them out uh, don't pull on them too hard this one's still usable this one's still good it hasn't completely disintegrated if this stuff is in bad shape the thing will just fall apart in your hands so this one we might wash off a little bit. This one. This one's okay. I'd rather replace it. Just because I don't know how much dirt is in here. And, you know, it's obviously going to be saturated with fumes. This one? Yeah. I think we're going to be replacing this. Now what you want to do is you want to keep these and use them as templates. Wow, that's just horrendous. The other point that I was going to make, uh, and the reason why we cut it in half where we did, was because, um, yeah, we could have cut it off down here at the bottom of the seam, but we wouldn't have gotten very far because this bottom plastic screen is welded in there. So this is one singular piece all the way down here. So by cutting it in the middle, like we did, we can plastic solder, plas yeah, plastic solder this thing back together, and we'll have a seam that is going to be behind the 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 clamp that holds it in place, so you'll never see it. Um, so that's ultimate. It's a little bit of a cosmetic um, solve, but that's ultimately why we cut it in half was to check these out and replace them, and where we cut it in half was so that we could cover it up and that it was an easy access point. So moving on, in the top part of the canister are two screens, plastic screens, that are removable. So you got this first one, which is kind of half moon shaped. And you know, looking at it, there really is no difference between one side or the other, so it doesn't really make much of a difference which way you put it back in. Um, I don't think it's really affected. And the other one is the one that goes up to the top port. This one just comes out nice and easy. And on t inside of that is another foam piece. So now you can see there's a port, there's a port, there's a port, and there's a port. So those are all the ones that come in here so you can get an idea of what they go through in the filtering of the, the, the fumes, the vapors. So now we need to inspect these. This foam is in really good shape so we'll be reusing this one. This one's okay. Might reuse it. I'm gonna replace this one. I'm gonna replace this one. So let's go get our foam. So here's our foam. Um, I just got this at the local craft store. It's open celled foam. You don't want to get uh, closed cell foam because obviously nothing flows through it. Uh, this is, I think, a quarter inch thick 
or three eighths. Um, and that will suffice perfectly for these because these originally were a quarter inch thick, but they just compressed over time. But, um, and all these things do is hold the charcoal in for the most part um, into the area and lets the, the dust and the vapors circulate as they need to. So uh, now let's just cut our templates out and then we can throw these back into the canister and get it welded back together. All right, now we've got our uh, foam pieces cut out. It doesn't have to be exact, but they're pretty close. They'll function really well. So I decided to replace this one anyways. Um, this looks cool black, even though you'll never see it again. So now let's put this back together. Make sure that this seats down in here. There's actually a ledge that that inner screen is supposed to fit on. Then just slide your uh, foam gasket on the top of it. Make sure you've got a nice seal around the outside and we're good to go. Drop this one in the bottom. That one's good. Cool. Happy, happy. Now, let's go back and weld this thing back together. Now what you need to do is run yourselves out and get you a plastic welding kit. Uh, I just got this one from Halber Freight. It was not much. 20 bucks, maybe 25? I can't remember. But it is definitely paid for itself a couple times over. It's really just a large soldering gun um, with a triangular head. So we're going to plug this thing in, get it heated up. We're going to start welding some stuff. Plastic welding. All right, once your iron gets hot enough, you'll be able to tell because all you have to do is just touch it to the plastic and it will melt it. Um, tape off a couple spots just so that once you get this thing all lined up, it's a lot easier to do. And you just kind of want to stitch. What I mean by stitching is you just go along, you press in, and then you go a little bit further. You kind of do like these stitch welds where you kind of push it back on itself. You don't want to go all the way through. You have to temper yourself. Work on it little by little. Because what you're doing is you're melting the plastic down and then pushing it back on itself. So you're filling in about a half of the plastic and melting it back against itself. So once you got a nice long line of the stitching, then you can go on with the flat piece and go right along the top of it and kind of fuse it all in and nice flat weld it out there you go and you want to do that all the way around once you get it all the way around and this stuff is cooled off which only takes about 20 seconds we should be back in place all right now we've got all plastic welded back together I mean it's not beautiful but I mean it's it's very functional and if you did this like I recommended, and cut it across where the uh, strap will be, um, you'll never see it. But the cool thing about it is, is it's, it's completely put back together now. The only thing I have to get is the, uh, the filter that goes in the bottom of this. It's this white, um, kind of meshy foam. Anyways, uh, Rock Auto carries these, I believe. Uh, I will put a link in the, dis uh, the comments or the description for it. But anyways, um, now, you need to fill it up with some carbonated charcoal, or charcoal carbon, or filter carbon, or whatever. Um, I just went out and got this at the local fish store. This was about 16 bucks, 15 bucks. Um, but you can also get it off of uh, Amazon. Um, obviously, you're going to need enough to fill this thing up. One thing that I didn't really take in consideration is getting this back in here. I had originally planned on drilling a hole, but I'm going to have to drill a hole right through the seam um, because I don't want to put another hole in here and have to plastic weld that up. But um, you'll want to drill a hole that's big enough for your carbon charcoal to get through. This dust kind of very small grain, so this, this shouldn't be a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drill a hole, probably like a quarter inch hole, maybe a three eighths inch hole, right on the seam that I did. Um, to cut through and fill this up. So let's drill the hole. Maybe I'll go with a, see a 
half inch. Nah. Let's go with a 3 8 wood bit. Maybe that'll work better. Hopefully it doesn't turn up too much. Hole's a little big, but yeah. I'm going to do like a little bit of a tapering action here. Okay. So. I'm going to hook this up to a vacuum cleaner and see if I can get the plastic out of it. Now that I got that vacuumed out, it really doesn't make a difference if you got a little bit of plastic in there. I mean, the whole thing's full of carbon anyways charcoal carbon. Uh, I am just going to funnel this in little by little. This ought to take a little bit of time. Well, I uh, went with uh, this small funnel, Harbor Freight funnel. Um, it's just enough to get it in there. I'm almost at the end. Like it's starting to get uh, tough to fill it up, so I have to kind of bat it down a little bit, but just take your time. Funnel keeps filling up. But if you just go little by little, get it in there. I've been doing this for about 10 minutes now. Maybe. Alright, that's about as much as I can get in there. Kind of try to compact it. I'm just filling this thing up as much as I possibly can. Looks like... Let's see, this thing was 22 ounces. Maybe I have uh, 2 ounces left, so maybe it's like about 20 ounces of um, activated filter carbon. Um, to fill this thing back up. So, um, now that I've got this filled up as much as I possibly can, I just need to use a little bit of the plastic welding kit to kind of fill over and uh, fill up this hole, and we're good. I think it's proven to be very useful, just saying. Make sure you get the plastic nice and well blended. All right, and there you have it. So, right there is the hole that we uh, just filled in. Pretty solid once it cools off. Um, you know, go through and make sure that you've got a good seam. Don't have any gaps. A little bit of air in there, but I don't think it's any different than what came from the factory. That pretty sure that the carbon that we put in here is better than what they put in the factory. So there you have it. You now have a completely restored original um, charcoal canister for your Jeep CJ7. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to put this in the Jeep and I'm going to show you where the, uh, the four ports actually go to. It actually says it on the canister, so that's kind of helpful, but let's just take a look and see where the tubes actually run to. According to the canister itself, the labels in the back, uh, you've got the ports facing away from you towards the center of the car. Uh, this one says carb bowl. Uh, next one in from the uh, right says tank. Third one in from the right says PCV valve, and then the the main top one um, that says uh, distributor vacuum. Okay, so let's take a look at where those things actually run to. Um, the we'll start with the distributor vacuum. Look, this uh, this is an eighty four, so I've already done um, the HEI uh, distributor. So I took the computer out um, and everything that went with that. So if you have your computer in, this might be slightly different, but for the most part, this should cover all the bases. So we're gonna start with the distributor vacuum. This comes out, goes up, and let's see, up through here, um, and then goes into, wraps up and around, um, the front of the actual carburetor goes up into the middle of the middle port of the carburetor right in front of the electric choke. Next one, PCV, that runs up and around the back of the firewall into a T PCV valve. Um, Depending on where you actually have your PCV valve um, vent tube, um, you could be up here, so your T could actually be up in front, in front of the air cleaner. Next one is the tank. 
that one's kind of self-explanatory. That one goes down into a line that runs all the way back to the vapor return in the, the gas tank. Um, and then the carb bowl, that one runs up and around. This is a fairly big tube. Uh, I think it's maybe three-eighths. And this one goes into right here on this T bracket. So the T comes out of the bottom um, vent uh, bowl, and then the top part um, comes out of the top, um, and that has an uh, L-shaped elbow in it. Hopefully you can see all that. This has the, the original um, uh, Carter double barrel um, carburetor in it. If you have a Weber, I don't know, um, you're going to have to figure that one out, but um, or anything else. But if you've got your, if you have the original two barrel, or you're on a uh, 4.2 inline six engine, um, those are where all of the, the lines for the vapor, uh, the vapor charcoal canister go. All right, so let's go this over, over this one last time. The distributor vacuum runs up and around, uh, goes into the port. Um, there's a small tube that sticks out of the passenger side of the Carver, Carter, <laughs> Carter double barrel carburetor um, that connects to the distributor vacuum. PCV runs up to the T PCV valve, whether you have it in the front or the back, either one doesn't make Rick, a difference. Um, tank goes back down underneath and returns to the, the fuel tank um, for vapors. And then the carb bowl, um, that runs up and around and connects to the T-bracket on the front passenger side of the carburetor, right in there. All right, good luck. If there's any questions or something that I missed um, or something else you'd rather have or you need a more in-depth explanation on, please put it in the comments. I will read and I will respond. Thanks so much for watching.